Uh, we are going to be blessed by Pastor Jose Rojas this morning. And how many of you were, were challenged and encouraged yesterday? Um, if, if you saw me on my phone, I actually was taking down some great quotes um, from the evening and just am blessed by you sharing your passion. And I love the authenticity and just the realness of you sharing your life with us. And I would love to pray with you as you start this morning. So let's invite Pastor Jose Rojas to come forward, and we're going to pray for him and let him share this morning. Hey, God, we just thank you for uh, bringing Pastor Rojas here for this weekend. And we just thank you, God, for the openness of minds and hearts that you will give us over the next few days. And we ask, God, that you will challenge us to the words of this man and let, let his words be your words. And we thank you, God, for his journey, for his passion, for his heart, for his love for children, for pouring into leaders. And we just surrender this speaking time to you. May we be in tune with exactly what we need to hear and will hear this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. I, um, I was overwhelmed with this morning's music. Um, a child can do anything if you just let them, if you just guide them. Those pieces in their complexity, in the subtlety of the notes, are usually heard at a college. This is um, very advanced music. Last night's bell choir, some of the most advanced I've heard in my career, which has been around for a few decades, and I'm shocked at what our kids can do if we just let them. Now, let's face it, 90% of our churches, we're busy saying what music is improper, and we're not letting our kids do their best work in music because somebody doesn't think it's good. I've been to churches where classical music is improper, and they don't let people play a violin. That, that, that freaks me out. I, then I, play, I go to other churches where I'm told my guitar is not coming in because the devil's instrument can't come into the house of God. You know, this subjective thing about music is frightening because people attempt to say, this is God's favorite music, and uh, you all better get with the program. And it's not popular to talk this way, and I will be, be getting hate mail and Ellen White quotes, you know, afterwards. But you know what? You watch yourself. You have hurt this church long enough. Your way has had decades, and music is not something for you to decide. In all your sincerity, do not stand in the way of a child expressing God's power through music. It may not be your music. I was at, a, at the first division-wide youth congress for a specific culture. And the band was so loud, my ears were hurting. There was ring, you know, you can no longer hear what's going on. It's just this roar with a, they had speakers on stage. It was being televised live, and I reviewed the end of a good career in my mind. That's Elder Rojas up there. Look at how he's leading this world astray with the music. I was shocked with the music. I was scared. I was, the university president shouted into my ear, what do you think? I can't hear you. What do you think? I'm sorry, doctor. I can't hear you. And he finally cupped over my ear. What do you think of the music? Oh, amen. <laughs> I was outright frightened that day. Even for me, <laughs> it was a scary day. But when over 300 came forward for baptism, I realized that God can use anything. He's not here to please me. He's here to please himself with saving his people from their sins. And, and if I go to Tennessee, they say, good, you brought your guitar. It's a guitar. It's not a guitar. It's a guitar. You have to show respect 
and I, I feel bad because I just can't cut the mustard with Nashville types, you know? It's, my son, Gabriel, he played for Laura Story the year she won the Grammy for Best New Christian Artist. And no one's asked me to play. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I just enjoy the good music like you all do. In Tennessee and in the South, it's a guitar. In other places, it's the devil's instrument. I think Jesus is fascinated by all of our infighting over what's his favorite stuff. But one thing must not happen. Do not stop a child from expressing glory to God through their music. Now, you, you evaluate your culture back home, but don't go right and wrong with the kids. They know what's right and wrong. The Holy Spirit's leading them too. And, and you, you cannot control a child. You cannot control a teenager. You can only focus them and unleash them. You can't put a bull into a birdcage. You know, that Brahmin bull has been giving me trouble, so I took the parrots out of the cage and put them in there. You cannot put a bull into a birdcage. You cannot put a child into a cage or a teenager into a cage. They will burst out. You can only unleash them. That's the direction God has called us. And focus them and watch the power that they unleash. So I just want to say before the presence of God this morning, a company of witnesses, that what music we have experienced in the last two meetings is overwhelming to my senses. Isn't it powerful? Can you tell what my favorite music is? Uh, my, my favorite uh, mu uh, musician is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. I, I, I took my kids to Austria, and I said, look, you guys, this is where Mozart was born. I took him to Mozart's birthplace. <laughs> this Mexican's excited, let me tell you. <laughs> and and I, I walk my kids in, look around, you guys. Cool, awesome, I'm hungry. <laughs> Let's go. So obviously Mozart doesn't make my kids' hearts tremble. Only mine does. And they think, that's awesome, Dad, because those two pieces, especially the third movement of that one, you're right, Mozart's got his stuff together. But I also like so and so and so and so, and it's quite. I will not record what my favorite, my kid's favorite song is. I think the Lord looks at us and, and reminds us that our righteousness is but a filthy rag. Anything that we give to Him is not enough, but it's through the blood of Christ that our sacrifices become acceptable. Does this make sense? Now today, I want to talk briefly. It, it was um, Gestalt psychology. Started by Wolfgang Kohler and a team, Max Wertheimer and Kurt uh, Kofta. Th these were the first guys to use uh, um, chimpanzees and in comparing infants, human infants, to uh, um, chimpanzees. And it was interesting that, uh, um, you know, these kinds of experiments, which we now look down upon because if you experiment on animals, you know, you got to think of their lives too. And, um, and one of the experiments, um, they, they, as soon as a baby chimpanzee was born, they separated it from its mother. What was the mother's desire? To hold her infant that she just gave birth to in a cage next to her. And what was the infant's desire? Be to be held by mommy. And uh, those of you moms remember uh, what it was and what it has been when you've given birth to your children. And to your exhausted husbands who attempted to coach you, who only got in the way, be quiet, you caused it all, leave me alone. And I remember losing it in the delivery suite at Loma Linda, and, and, and the nurse said, you know what, billions of women before your wife and billions of women after your wife have done exactly this. Either you get with the program, get out of my delivery suite. Sorry, I don't accept your apology, just shut up tired of all you men who try to coach and all you do is ruin it for the delivery and you know when you when you have that baby remember some of you've had that joy they place that baby on your chest look sweetheart let's just crawl <laughs> my wife her eyes rolled back she lost a huge amount of blood at the moment of delivery and i stood for 40 minutes watching them save her wondering if I'd be a widower and a father on the same day. And then she finally regained consciousness, and then she finally was declared stable. And I remember the, 
I didn't get that moment of placing the baby on her chest. And look, babe, she looks just like you. None of that. I was just glad that she was alive. And, and that our little girl, Veronica, who's now uh, celebrated her third uh, wedding anniversary in Namokosa is over 30. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so uh, I'll never forget my wife taking two to three days to finally be herself. I want to hold my baby. And then I put Veronica on her chest. <laughs> She's beautiful. Sweetheart, I'm so glad you're alive. And she says, I want another one. <laughs> the scriptures are right. How can a woman forget her pain? I want another one. <laughs> it, it, sisters are the ones, the guys are like, I don't get it. What, what was cute about it? I don't. <laughs> women know what I'm talking about, right? Here, we're glad she's alive. I mean, she made it. I want another one. Because to hold your child, what's the first thing you did when you stood with your child? Did you notice you did this? Remember this? I ran right away to a furniture store and paid 400 bucks for a wooden rocking chair. My kids are all fighting over it now because they were all rocked on that chair. And you have these little lullabies you make up for them that you will not share outside the family because it's too embarrassing. <laughs> But this was Jennifer's song when she was born, right? And there you are. And Jennifer's 42 now with kids of her own. But there you are. You know what this movement is called? Vestibular stimulation with a V. Vestibular stimulation. It's called what? Vestibular stimulation. The vestibules are in your inner ear. It's millions of nerve endings in the middle of your head, and, and, and it's just, you have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear, and, the, and these kinds of movements stimulate the vestibular centers of your nerves there, where your hearing comes into your brain, and when you stimulate uh, vestibular stimulation, something happens to you. So when you held the infant, the instant, you weren't trained, nobody gave you a book, you just instantly did this. Why did you do this? Because the infant was crying. Ah, ah, give me the baby. Ah, I don't know why she's crying, Mom. I don't know. I, I fed her. I burped her. I, I don't, I've checked her diaper. Give, 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 it to, give it to me, says Grandma, right? Ah, ah, ah. Go, go, go. <laughs> what did you do? You gave the infant what? Vestibular stimulation. What's the favorite thing that, you, that children want when they get to a playground? And they run, I got to get there first. Where do they run first? The swings. Push me, push me, push me. And they move their little legs and nothing's happening. Push me. And you pick them up. I want dad to push me because he'll loop me around the hall. <laughs> the grandpa did it when no one was looking. My mom would have never allowed grandpa to do that. And, they, and, they, and you push them. <laughs> That's called vestibular stimulation. These guys in Gestalt psychology noticed that when the infant chim chimpanzee was, was pulled out of the cage away from their mom, the infant began to rock itself. And it would cry, eh, eh. And it couldn't get into the neighboring cage to its mama. I think that's terrible. That was torturous to learn this. I, it's not liberal when you care about animals. It's not. Well, I don't know why we let, allowed it to become part of the liberal conservative thing. You beat a dog, you should go to jail. Because that dog has more frontal lobe capacity to understand what's happening to it than you understand. You beat a dog... I'll call the cops, and I'll say, yeah, she did it. Yeah, I know we sit together at church, but shouldn't have messed with that dog. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. I'd come over and pray with you. If you didn't listen, I'd bring a couple of elders. We'll pray with you, and after that, we'd call the police. That's Matthew 18. We will follow biblical procedure on all matters. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do you catch the point? The infant chimpanzee would be rocking itself in the cage, providing its own vestibular stimulation. You see, people are crying out. 
They want to be loved. And when no one loves me, I'll find a way to stimulate myself. You know when you hold the person you love? I mean, hold the person you love. Now, don't raise your hand, just your conscience. What do you enjoy most? My wife doesn't want me to just hug her. Hey, babe, good morning. No, no, no. What does she want? In the kitchen, in front of the stove, as we unnecessarily burn a pancake. (laughs) What does she want? She says, hold me. That's different than hug me, right? Now, to one another, the, okay, uh, I need a hug, okay. But to your love, it's what? Hold me. When you hold that son of yours, that daughter of yours, that brother or sister of yours, that parent of yours, what is it? You hold. And what do you do when you're standing? Notice that even as adults, no matter how old we get, it's vestibular stimulation. I love you, baby. Yeah, then how come you told me this thing yesterday? I know, I know, I know. I... <laughs> she remembers. But does she want me to let her go? No, don't let me go, please. We'll get there, babe. It's been 37 years of marriage. 40 if you count our dating. I put up with a lot. You understand me? <laughs> yes, 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 I know. I, I've shared you with the world. When is it my turn? I love you, babe. I love you, too. And what are we doing? You see, this movement stimulates this part of the the inner ear, which then stimulates the brain. This, This reminds you that you're capable of loving. Why does death hurt so much? Because you can no longer share vestibular stimulation with somebody, and you reach into the casket. They're no longer moving. Vestibular stimulation is critical to human existence. People need to be loved. My brother Jerry, he was homeless for two years in East L.A. We'd go out to the park to look for him. He had a job, but he wouldn't tell us where he worked. He was a top welder where he worked. But he and his wife had a falling out, and she threw him out of the house. He had no place to live, and... So when you think of putting down homeless people, you watch yourself. I don't want you criticizing my family. I'm very sincere with that. I've had cousins who've been homeless on Skid Row in L.A. All those homeless people have families, many of whom are looking for them. And they're, they're not all mentally ill. They're not lazy, believe me. They just don't have a home. It's hard to understand in, in a nation that's befallen with, with liberal and conservative arguments of silliness that where we lose the vestibular stimulation that we need of each other. I noticed my brother when we finally found him and gave him a place to live that he could pay rent with his income. We caught him doing what by himself? He was rocking himself. All he was saying is, I want somebody to love me. My brother-in-law, David, after he lost his woman and he lost the baby, the state of California, and put her up for foster and then for adoption, he ended up under a bridge in Sacramento, out in the rain, and he was homeless. So we went out and looked for David. And my wife just suddenly showed up to Maryland with him. Hey, David, what's going on? Yeah, I come to live with you guys. Oh, as I looked to Ruthie, you didn't tell me. We had a new resident coming into the family. You know he's been homeless. You're absolutely right. I forgot. Welcome, David. And for the next year, eight years, he lived in our house until he got himself drug-free, clean, and now he has three jobs. And he has a nicer house than me. <laughs> But when he got to my house, he'd, always, he'd be so excited. Jose, guess what? I was talking to another guy about a job application, and how did, what's he doing? He learned to rock himself. Vestibular stimulation is so critical. This is what a child cries out for the most. And sometimes the best we can do is punish them. 
there's a difference between beating a child and giving them time out, no matter how much comedians make fun of it. Because at the end of time out, you still get a, a hug. But at the end of a beating, you don't get any stimulation except the re memories of pain. Now, why am I talking about this? Because God has his way of giving us vestibular stimulation. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our, forgive us our sins. And not only that, he will cleanse, cleanse us for how much? All. All unrighteousness. Do you believe that? Yeah. I'm asking you, do you believe that? Yeah. Because if God forgives you, then you can forgive yourself. You can forgive yourself. But every time we talk about forgiveness, we spend all the time talking about how for God forgives us and we can forgive ourselves. But you must remember that Jesus only spent 13% of his time talking about how God forgives us. The rest of the high proportion of his messages were about how we forgive each other. Well, she knows what she did. And if she thinks I'm going to forgive her, she has another thing coming. And your children are watching you say that. If you don't know how to hand out vestibular stimulation to a broken soul who's broken your heart, but pastor, she destroyed my marriage. She now has my man next to her. It's true. Unforgivable, terrible stuff happens. But we can forgive. Forgiveness is not for them. It's for your benefit. We have diseases among us because of people who don't want to forgive. I saw one piece of research when I was doing my work in, uh, her, in um, toxicology of venoms at Loma Linda. I met a couple of people who were doing research on, on lupus. There were some women in the study that the moment they forgave this horrendous, unforgivable thing that happened to them, the moment they forgave that, their lupus went into remission. There are folks who are sick because you can't let go of the hurt of legitimate hurt that was done to them. And some of you have suffered unmentionable stuff. Some of you have been through things that cannot be forgiven. But yes, they can. You know why? Because we all need vestibular stimulation. What did Jesus say about the verdugos, the bad guys who killed him? Before giving up the ghost, he turned to them. And what did he say to his father? Forgive them. Even though they don't even know what they're doing. They're going to say like the Nazis, I just carried out orders. They don't even know what they're doing. What did Jesus say in his dying breath? Forgive them. Because it's not for their sake. It was for his sake to let go of that puddle of poison that was gathering in his broken heart. You see, the power of vestibular stimulation is we give it to someone else who needs it. There was a woman who was um, excited to see her kids. All of a sudden, one kid came in, oh, mijo. Then the other kid, oh, mija. And then the other one, ay, mijo, you too. <laughs> and, oh, everybody's walking in, ay, mijo. It's like 10 o'clock at night. It's raining. It's 38 degrees outside. And then she says, okay, where's my Gerardo? Where's my Jerry? And you know, mom, you can read your kids instantly, right? Your kids can put a, their best face to it, but now you can fool dad, <laughs> but you can't fool mom. Uh, there are only a few exceptions to that that will meet with me. You need to know it's my husband at our house. I'm the one. Okay, so you're, you're the one percent or half of one percent, uh, but everybody else, right, ladies? Your kid walks by, what's up, sweetheart? Nothing. Everybody lies. I can tell. Come, talk to mom about it. I, I swear, mom, nothing. <laughs> nothing. I swear, mom. Nothing. <laughs> you can see right through your kids in an instant. And my mom says, where's my Gerardo? And suddenly, he's gone. And she knew it. The moment he was absent in the group, she knew it. It was shocking. He was murdered. His body was thrown behind a warehouse. What are the police saying? They closed the case. 
Well, I want to go see him. He's been buried for four months. See, that was my mother on the occasion of my brother's murder. And you know what the first thing this mom says to her kids as she gathered us all to her and was smoothing our hair and, and talking to us and listening to our tears. I expected to hear my mom scream and break some dishes and throw the cat out or something. But she, her first words were, there will be no vengeance. I lost my boy, and nothing that we do will bring him back. Now, you have to understand, a hood family, you hit us, we're going to hit you harder. We're going to go get our cousins. We're going to go spray your house. Yeah, the eight-year-old might be the only one killed because he was out there with his tricycle at the wrong moment. And you may pass judgment against us because it comes out in the evening news. An eight-year-old child was shot in the head while playing on his... But it, it, when they come and hit us, we're going to hit them. What did my mother say? There will be no vengeance. Mom, we could take care of this. There will be no vengeance. You understand me, young man? Yes, ma'am. Now, she won't hit me, but she might still give me a timeout. <laughs> now, I may be 32 years old, but she'll still... You know, go sit in that corner. Don't come out of there till I tell you to. My mom was a substitute teacher. She was a chef. A chef. She cooked for Ronald Reagan. But she was a substitute teacher. And last week I went to see her. She's quickly succumbing to Alzheimer's. And she still keeps the badge next to her, her bed. And the badge simply says, I love kids. I wanted to bring it here and show it off. She goes, you're not taking my badge anywhere. You go get your own. <laughs> There's a badge company in town. They'll make you one. <laughs> I've had this badge for 51 years. You stay away from my, <laughs> my mom. Mother's Day came around. I called my mother. Hey, Mom, happy Mother's Day. And she goes, mijo, the Lord gave me a gift today. In Latino tradition, moms always say that to their kids. The Lord gave me a gift. And I ask God for a gift, and you, you are the gift I ask God for. You know, they'll shut you down with some kind of poem or something. And here you're calling for Mother's Day, and they make you feel good about being one of their kids. I call her, and she says, son, the Lord has given me a gift. And I said, what's that, Mom? Today, I forgive the two boys who took away my son. Uh, Mom. And I want you to join me, son. Join me in praying for el indio y el güero. I want, you, I want you to find them, son. I want you to baptize them so they can be saved. I want to introduce them to my son proper. I, I want him to be saved. She's all excited. Mom, oh, excuse me, Pastor Rojas. I thought I saw you on 3ABN eloquently <laughs> preaching on forgiveness. But when it's your turn... The eloquence seems to go into silence. What was my mom saying? What do those two guys need? I want you to go out and love those boys. Find them, son. And I want them saved. They took away something precious. But I want them saved. Now, what does our country say when something like that happens? I want to be there. I'll flip the switch. And when they say, I'm sorry, and their last words, I'll tell them, you're going straight to a really, really hot place without using terminology that is offensive to recorded material in the Seventh-day Adventist church. <laughs> you see, brothers and sisters, we live in a society of vengeance, and we feel justified in our vengeance because somewhere in the Old Testament, there's an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You'd poke out my eye, I'm going to get my cousins, we'll poke your eye out. But Jesus said, it shall not be so with you. If someone hits you on this cheek, offer them the other. He's not saying literally, well, you broke this side, you made as well crackle this. He's not saying literally. He's talking about our attitude. Forgive those who despitefully use you in my name. Pray for those who abuse you. You know why? Because people need to be loved. They need vestibular stimulation. And you see it best in the life of a child. The life of a child. And then when they would push him in the suite, it was so, so, so much fun. 
We went to the swings. It was raining, but I don't care. I'm a proud Portlander. <laughs> it's not even rain. It was drizzle. But my cousins from California were all mad because they've never seen rain in their whole life. <laughs> Kids will tell you their greatest memories were on the swings. Why is it that as we get older, we become harsher about vestibular stimulation? At our youth congresses, there would always be people, I'll give you a hug. They wear a badge, I'll give you a hug. That was their job. And youth leaders are coming in by the thousands. Not youth, youth leaders, just like you, children's leaders. And they'd run into somebody, I hand out hugs. <laughs> I need a hug. Why? Because leaders get beaten up back at the church, right? I know not at your church. Everyone's nice to you at church, right? <laughs> I, but think of other places where they're rough on their children's leaders and their youth leaders. Vestibular stimulation is critical, ladies and gentlemen, and the best way to practice is hand out forgiveness. Love someone who doesn't deserve to be loved. Love someone who will never apologize. Is it possible to forgive the unforgivable? Yes. Is it probable? Well, I would put it at a 98.4% improbable factor. You know what? Christ in me, the hope of glory means you can forgive. Let go of that baggage. That poison that's been sitting on you for decades needs to go now. That man who did that to you, that woman who did that to you, ask God this very day, please plant a seed in my heart. Today, this pus is lanced. Today, I go on spiritual antibiotics. Today, Lord, I choose healing. I'm going to forgive the unforgivable. Give it away. Get rid of it. Find new love in the arms of Jesus. Like my wife, well, why did you tell me that Thursday? I know, I, there's no excuse. I'm a jerk. Finally, you admit it. <laughs> All she wants is what? Vestibular stimulation. And then... Right, ladies, you forgive your guy of terrible stuff. Yes. Terrible stuff that we men are capable of doing. And you can forgive him. Why? Because it ends in, she says, you know what, I enjoy making up. This is great. Because <laughs> it ends in vestibular stimulation. Now, this is the clinical approach to forgiving and letting go. Go out and love somebody. So I put it on my social network, and I'll conclude with this. Before I closed my Facebook, um, I had 80,000 followers, and it was growing all by itself, uh, two or 3,000 a week, just like this cancerous tumor. It was just... <laughs> and most of my comments were from opponents, so they found me. And I would get 2,000 <laughs> condemnations on a single day. My kids were saying, you're averaging six hours a day, Dad. You need a life. Really? So then I got rid of my Facebook. I closed it down. Soy feliz, soy feliz. Sin Facebook, yo soy feliz. I'm happy. Now I'm just on Twitter. <laughs> you haven't found me. <laughs> See, it's really good. <laughs> so shh, don't tell anyone. Because <laughs> up to now I only have supporters and we talk business and ministry online. Anyway. One day I put on there, you want to taste the love of God? And everybody said, yes, yes, yes. Go out and love somebody. Start with someone who doesn't like you. That's how God loves. He loves those who will never love him back. Amen. It's like your kids. Do you put measurements on which kid you're going to? Well, I love her because she understands. But I don't love you. You understand, young man? Is that how you are as a parent? You love your kids, whether they're grateful or not, whether they're responsive or not. You just love your kids. And that's why when someone else entrusts their kids to you, to sit in your classroom, to be in your club, in your Pathfinder club, to be in your group, to be in your program, they're trusting you with the children they love. And you have no trouble loving them, right? But the best way to purify what you do for a child is to let this be cleansed too. Love the adults who have broken your heart and forgive those who have abused you and mistreated you. Be, be, bless those who have cursed you. 
This is the words of Jesus. I'd love to be able to claim credit for such deep concepts of love, but all I can do is tell you this is what Jesus taught. See, he was preparing his disciples to be leaders too, and if they couldn't forgive, how could they effectively lead? If we cannot forgive one another of our sins, how can we effectively lead? I will not work with him. It'll never work. No, sir. I don't want anything to do with this guy. Get him off the crew. Now, if he's committed a crime, I agree. Turn him in. But if you simply don't like him, vestibular stimulation is called for. We need to love each other. Does this make sense? I hope that some of these messages are not just pretty and cool. And, well, you know, I was just so inspired, even though I don't remember a thing he said. I'm not here to inspire you. You got a lot of great stuff going on this weekend to inspire you. I'm not here to try to get you excited or my role is to be a provocation this weekend. There are things that you will like and there will thing, be things that challenge your presuppositions, your notions. And yes, you might know more about a topic than I do, but so what? My role here as I understand my assignment is that you can grow. We need to stand together and grow together. Just like we watch our children grow, we must continue to grow. Never stop growing. Become. Because this is the last generation. This is the promised army under your care. And they must fulfill their destiny. Yes, we are all broken leaders, but so what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it starts with forgiveness. You receive forgiveness for your own sins. And then it goes on to forgiveness. Forgive those who have despitefully used you, who have betrayed you, who, 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 who mistreat you in the name of, of Jesus and in the name of Alan White. I get brutalized about once a month still. It used to be about every week, but now that I'm traveling less... It's about once a month. I still get told off royally with a chain-smoking list of Ellen White quotes and, and stuff taken out of context that I've been in the vault at the White Estate study and personally for years, and somebody will come and body slam me. And then I say, I, I let them tell me everything, and it can go on for hours, let me tell you, about how I'm going to cook and how the last piece of bone is still left, and I'll feel the flames, even though bones have no nerve endings and do not feel anything. When you break an arm, that pain has to do with nerves and muscles and everything else around it. But uh, anyway, uh, uh, without arguing, the person unloads on me and tells me just how badly I'm going to burn in hell. And then I, at the end, I'll just smile and say, so can we have a covenant before the Lord this morning or this evening? What? I pray for you and you pray for me. Well, I never. Exactly. That's how I can see. Why don't we pray together? Well, I don't know what to see. She knew how to beat me up, but she didn't know how to pray for somebody. OK, so you go first. Pray for me. All right. Are you sure? Yes. Lord, help Elder Rojas to come out of his slumber and the evil path that he currently walks on that he might be saved. Help him to repent of his terrible this and that. Help him to shave this mustache. And get rid of the evil on his face. Lord bless. And she'll let me have it even in prayer. And now I pray. Uh, uh, you have a husband? Yes. What's his name? Robert. Okay. And kids? Oh, oh it's Jennifer and Bob and, and my little Bobby. And I have this many grandkids and this many great grandkids. Okay. Lord, I ask you to bless my sister so-and-so and Robert and, and Bobby and Jennifer, Lord. And, all the, and, I, and I, all the names I can remember. And everybody else I forget right now, Lord. I want you to bless them wherever they are right now. What happens to her? <laughs> they all left the church. And Lord, they're not in the church right now. And my sister has a broken heart. See her tears. And reach her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Why aren't they in the church? Who knows? All I know is that she's so overwhelmed, she's chosen anger as her response. And she wasn't aware she had other options. The only place to find out their salvation is to be loved again. She needed vestibular stimulation. So what am I doing? I'm rubbing her shoulder and 
There's a rhythmic movement to that. She's receiving vestibular stimulation. And Lord, I want you to bless my sister who today comes to church with a broken heart. She's crying out for her family, Lord. Hear her cries, O Lord, like you did to your people of old. Come come back, Lord, and answer her prayer and bring back her kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. And after we finished praying, guess what she did? She hugged me, all five foot one of her. She grabbed me and wouldn't let me go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And what did we all, all of a sudden start doing without imagining it? Vestibular stimulation. It started out with, you're going straight to a hot place. And now how is it ending? Because we took time to pray with those for those who despitefully use you. Pray for your enemies. In other words, don't hold on to the poison and get yourself sick. Let it out and love those who don't deserve to be loved. She became my friend because I had four more sermons to go. If I'm in trouble already, now she sat in the front row for each program afterwards. You see, we became friends and we're friends to this day. So what began as evil, remember when, when Joseph told his brothers, you meant evil, yes, but God made Good, come out of this. The power of vestibular stimulation. So with a guy, you know, the teenagers, dude, and I touched their shoulder. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thanks, Pastor. I wish my mom heard that. Well, where is she? Hermana, come. What, Pastor, I hope you're talking to him. This kid has problems. Stop it, Mom. You're embarrassing me. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Now I grab them together, Mom and son. Thank you, Lord. For this family, what are they getting? Vestibular stimulation. They're assured that somebody loves them, and they're going to make it. This mom does not know how to communicate with her son. I know that you don't suffer that at all, right? The, your communication is absolutely perfect with your children. Yeah, I don't understand this, Howler, because we talk well. But the rest of us, I still got a 17-year-old at the house. And you're a youth professional. You don't know anything, Daddy. And the rest are young adults. You see the power of love. Love conquers a multitude of sins. Let's see here. I want you to think of love with new eyes. Not so much that God has forgiven you, because that we do know. Even though many of us struggle, um, and I'm married to a therapist, and my daughter's a therapist, and I've learned that counseling can help you come to terms with the loss in your life, and you can forgive yourself, like you know God has forgiven you. But I want to go deeper. As you hear this song, can it be that God is calling you to forgive the unforgivable in someone else? The divisions in churches are long-term because we hurt each other years ago and we still remember it. Yeah, that was back in the flap of 1994 after a nominating committee when they pulled my husband out of first elder. That was a mess. And my husband hasn't been back to church since then. And she's the instigator. So what's your assignment when you get home? Forgive the instigator. She hurt my husband, but she's my sister. We're going to be in heaven together forever. Then, I, then you go home, tell your husband, I forgave her. What? The one who drove, drove me away? Yeah, I think it's about time you and I go to church. You grow up, baby. Come over here. Let me hold you. And you give that old man his vestibular stimulation. Sweetheart, I'm just lost without you at my side at church. Who else am I going to hold hands with during all those boring sermons? <laughs> Please come with me. All right, I'll go just for you. He'll do it the man way. But don't think that I'm going to, I'm not going to think about it. Just, I need you at my side, sweetheart, right? And he gets his what? Vestibular stimulation. And you've done what with the woman who drove him away back in 94? You've loved her. You forgive her. That's the beginning of healing. So as you hear this song, Search your own heart and let it go. Hold your dreams 
Jesus, I surrender all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence. children's ministry leader, are you ready to forgive the unforgivable? Let it go. It's time to have this pus lanced. Take a good dose of antibiotic, and don't you quit early. Run the full cycle of your antibiotic. It's time to be cured of this horrible pain you've been carrying around for a long time. And with that healing, the beneficiaries are going to be the children under your care. It's called what? 
vestibular stimulation. Now, you watch them during the, this weekend. You're going to catch a couple of them out there on a couch doing this. I don't know what I'm going to do. And if you catch somebody, if it's a woman, ladies, what are you going to do? Come over here. They're crying out. If it's a guy, gentlemen, come over here, man. Put your hand on his shoulder. And, and if you're like me, skid over here, dude. Don't tell nobody. Give him his hug. Meet each other. Give each other vestibular stimulation while you're here. And let the Lord lead you. Go. Go in his name. Tell somebody what you have seen here this morning.